Paul writes to the Corinthians, we do not dare to classify our, or compare ourselves with some of those who commend themselves. But when they measure themselves to one another and compare themselves with one another, they do not show good sense. God add his blessing to the reading of his word. I always love going and hearing a symphony orchestra play. It's always so special to be able to, I like all sorts of musical groups, but to hear the symphony orchestra where it's the percussion, the brass, the woodlands, and the strings, it's always so exciting. It really seems like a little miracle to me that everyone can get together. Everyone can be on the same page. Everyone can play the notes they're supposed to play at exactly the right time. And I always love the part at the beginning where the orchestra, all individually, all the players are, are going over parts, are tuning up their instruments, and there's sort of cacophony of different sounds and noises. It's such a wonderful, exciting sound uh, to me as they're all playing different things. And then that great moment where either the concertmaster or the oboist sounds one clear note. One note, and all the orchestra plays that note together to make sure they're not just in tune because in the way they think, but that they're in tune with one another. Typically, this is the A note. 440 hertz is played. And everyone gets on the same page. Everyone is tuned in, and we can't imagine what it would sound like if everyone played and their instruments were tuned differently. What a terrible sound that would make. It's this moment of tuning that's so important and why it happens every time. Let's make the claim today, or let me make the claim, that so often the trouble we get into in our lives is because our lives are out of tune. How easy this can happen for our lives to be out of tune. Something is wrong. And we know it. We can feel it. Maybe we feel it at work. Something is out of tune there. We don't find the same meaning in our job we used to find. Or we're out of tune with those around us, with our co-workers. And so going into work each day, it becomes a challenge. It becomes no fun. Because in some particular way, we are out of tune with those around us, with ourselves, with our best selves, with the purpose that we find and can find in our lives. We can be out of tune in our relationships as well. So easy to get out of tune in one way or another with those around us. All of us have a circle. We may live fairly solitary lives, but there are still a circle of people in our lives, and our interactions with them determines really so much of the quality of our lives. And when we are out of tune with one particular person in our lives, or with a bunch of people in our lives, what misery that can bring to us. Being in tune with those around us. Often the reason we get out of tune is quite simply we're not communicating with each other. How often this happens? We have some friend or, or someone in our lives, maybe our, our spouse, maybe uh, uh, someone that we love, and we get out of tune with that particular person. We quit communicating with them effectively. It, it happens when we start playing little games in our relationship. Have you ever in your life, and maybe you have, because I don't think this happens to everybody, but have you ever been in your life and been with, uh, with a family, with your family, with a group of friends, uh, with a group of, uh, of people, uh, you know, at dinner, and suddenly you realize that the object of this dinner is to win. You want to win dinner. How does that happen? That all of a sudden, you want to be on top. You want, to, uh, you want to play some game with everyone else so that you come out the winner and everybody else then, of course, comes out the loser. And what a miserable experience that can be to be that out of tune with those around us. And it's so easy to do, especially in relationships. It hardly ever happens all at once. That we take one giant step and suddenly we're out of tune with those around us. Usually it's one little bit at a time. Because we're playing some little game that other people don't under quite understand the rules to, we 
we get out of tune with them. One thing I talk to couples about uh, uh, as we do premarital coaching is the game that can often, uh, the couples often play is, guess what I'm mad at? Guess what's making me angry? And if you decide, if you discover what is making me angry, what you have done, then you win the game, I guess. But really, the point is uh, for them not to know, not to guess, not to be able to understand. And when, that's it, right there. That breakdown in communication, that is, a, that is a, a person or a group who are two people who are out of tune with one another. It's so easy to do this in any of our relationships, to find ourselves out of tune with each other because of, frankly, a lack of being willing to honestly communicate our needs to one another. It can happen here at the church. Churches can so easily, get, and do often, get out of tune. We can get out of tune when we forget that the reason we are here is we are on a mission. Here we are. Each and every one of us joined together to be on a mission with one another. And Jesus Christ, the very last thing he said to his disciples, said to us, reminds us of this. What is our mission? To go into the world to make disciples, to baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them what Jesus has taught. And that is our mission. And when we forget that, that's a priority we get out of tune. We forget that our, our personal mission as disciples is to be Christ-like. To follow Christ, to be like Jesus, to do the kind of things Jesus would have done. And when we forget that, we can as individuals and also as a church get out of tune. It's easy as a group. We can do it in our faith as well. Simply feeling as, as we seek further from God, to get out of tune with God because of our distance. And really, you know, even our relationship with God often comes down to communication. Are we communicating with God? Are we talking with God? Are we inviting God into our homes and into our families? And if we are not, then we can get out of tune. Or we do not feel God. We do not understand what God wants for us. And one thing that this can affect and affect is our integrity. When our faith is out of tune, how easy it is for our integrity to get out of tune. And what work it takes often to get that back. And how do we do it? How do we keep our faith? How do we keep our integrity? How do we keep our relationships? All these areas of our church, how do we keep them in tune all the time? Well, of course, the answer is we can't. We're all going to get out of tune. Each and every one of us in our church will, in our work will, in all areas of our lives, we get out of tune. You know, that's what happens when we play the instrument. The instrument gets out of tune. You think, all right, well, we'll just put the instrument up. But guess what? It gets even worse out of tune if you don't play it. So playing it or not playing it, all of us, all of us can get out of tune. And we have to then make tuning ourselves, tuning our lives, something that we always do. It is a constant effort to keep ourselves in tune with one another and with God. Particularly, we Christian folk are called to keep our lives, keep our homes, keep our churches, our faith, our integrity, keep all of these things in tune. There's a story about a sort of a crazy old uh, uh, music professor at a college, and somebody was walking past the professor, and, and he was always quite a dramatic music guy. And, uh, they asked him, one student as he was walking through campus asked him, uh, Professor, what's the good word for today? And the professor pulls out the dramatic flourish, pulls out his uh, tuning fork with the A note, and he sets it ringing. He says, the good news today is that this today is an A note, 440 hertz. Yesterday it was an A note, and tomorrow it will be an A note. No matter the noise I hear in this world, this will always be an A. And of course, we know what he's saying. The chaos of the world, the noise of the world, all the distractions that we have, it is good to have one thing we can count on. One thing we know to be true. We may be facing one of the most perplexing issues of our lives, uh, an ethical issue, at work or at home or in our personal lives. And 
to know that there is one thing that rings true as we struggle through that ethical issue. There is this thing that rings true in our lives, in our world. How wonderful it is to know that despite the confusion of this world, there is something that rings true. Something by which we can turn our lives, get our lives back in tune, in tune as ourselves, and in tune as a community, in tune as a family. What a great thing. What harmony can be present when that happens? Put this uh, dissonance, this difficulty to be in harmony with one another, at least for that time when we're all in tune together. How do we do it? What do we tune our lives by? What can we all look to? That one note. Right, that one person sounding out that one note for us that we can all get on the same page with. What is it? Well, first, what it is not. It is not other people. And how often we make this mistake by thinking we can tune our lives in accordance with other people. We're going to get in trouble get in such trouble in our lives if we start living our lives so as to seek the approval of those people around us. How quickly that can get us terribly out of tune, even with the best intentions, even with those who we know want the very best for us. If we try to tune our lives even to them, we're going to start making mistakes. We're going to start doing things that we shouldn't do acting in ways that are out of our character, following paths that others think we should take, instead of the paths that are absolutely the paths that are right for us. We get in danger when we tune our lives by those around us. And certainly today, we can get in such danger if we're starting to think, how can I tune my life? life? What should I tune my life by? And we think, well, what am I hearing most? I'm hearing the television. Movies, I'm watching, I'm seeing things on the internet. I will tune my life based on what I am seeing in all of these very influential places. And what a silly mistake that is to tune our lives by entertainment. <clears throat> but we do this. I mean, people will do this. We think about how wonderful and how much some of us. Uh, love reality TV, and it is. It's so entertaining, uh, and it can be uh, so much fun to watch. Uh, you know, people making coalitions, people betraying one another, lying to one another, and yes, it can be extremely entertaining, but do we really want to tune our lives by that? Do we want to turn our lives into that? Well, no, of course we don't. And so we change the channel, and we see somebody on TV who is angry, yes, but more than that, they are hateful because they're sitting across from somebody else. And what did this other person do to them? Had the effrontery to disagree with them. And so it's not just anger, it's not just a debate, it's hatred. Hatred that is expressed. And if we choose, that's how we tune our lives. But hatred that we can all see on television every day. And if we choose, we can tune our lives by that. And what a mistake that is. Tune our lives by others, to tune our lives by the ridiculous things we can see on television each day and the ridiculous ways we can see other people act. As long as we are tuning ourselves by others, by what others expect, by what others say, we are going to get out of tune with God. And there it is. God is sounding out a note for each and every one of us keep our lives in tune, to keep our lives harmonious, to keep our lives productive, to keep us in a way working with one another. A blessing to be able to, uh, to tune our lives to God. And when we do, instead to other people, we, we miss out. We stay out of tune. Uh, it's what Paul was saying in our brief scripture reading today. But those who compare themselves to one another, those who measure themselves by one another, they lack understanding. It's not how we measure ourselves. It's not who we should compare ourselves to. We've got to stay in tune by thinking about, by tuning ourselves to the Word of God. 
And it's that simple. It is the Word of God. When we say the Word of God as Christians, we mean two things. Generally, or possibly more than two things. But the two things I want to think about today is the ongoing message of God. The theme of the Bible. As we read through it from beginning to end, and what do we see there? What is repeated over and over? Loving God. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Certainly that is the Word of God. And there may see other things in the Bible, but if they depart from that, be suspicious. They must be there for another reason. Because if they're telling you that you're not supposed to love those around you, that's not the tune. That's not how we get our lives back in tune. It is by the Word of God. So yes, the Word of God is the message of God, but the Word of God is also the Son of God. And we see this in the Gospel of John. Jesus is called God's Word. Because we can look at Jesus, we can look at His life, and we can say, there it is. That is what we can tune our lives to. And that is why we can talk about discipleship. To be able to be followers of Jesus Christ. To be able to act like Jesus Christ. Oh, what a beautiful music, what beautiful melodies we can make if we are tuned to the Word of God. Sent to us by God. And why? Yes, to help us to tune our lives. No better place. No better way to keep our lives in tune. And yes, we can look at the world, we look at the world around us and say, gosh, you know, but everybody else, they're all just doing whatever they want to do. When they see something, they grab it, they take it. That seems to be the way people get things in this world. So I tune my life to that. I, I, I want to tune my life uh, to me first. But then we, we see the scriptures and we know that a part of the word of God is putting God first. Putting others equal to ourselves or even before ourselves. Which are we going to tune to? Which one? So many different options that we have on how we tune to God. We can be, we can tune in and we can say, you know, I'm gonna, yeah, there is a lot to be angry about. There's a lot of, a lot of folks out there in this world that uh, probably deserve to be hated because of what they've done. They deserve it. But then we hear the words of Jesus Christ saying, "Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you." Are we willing to tune our lives to that tricky note right there? Loving our enemies, praying for those who persecute them, persecute us, even as we disagree with them, even as we are in conflict with them, to keep that love in our hearts. How are we going to tune our own generosity? There we get each of us to make decisions about our lives, about what we give in our lives. Right? Here of the church, yes. But also the other, other organizations in, the, in, the, in our community and around our world that help people about how we give with, uh, with, our, with our work, toward, toward our volunteering and helping out or just helping a stranger. How are we going to tune our lives in that? Are we going to look at others and say, oh, well, I'm pretty much doing what that guy's doing, so I guess I'm okay. Or are we going to tune ourselves to the way God wants us to live, giving proportionately? giving sacrificially, giving regularly, giving joyfully of ourselves. Not just in the envelope on Sunday, but every day of our lives. How are we going to give to others? Are we going to base it on what others give or what God expects? Are we going to tune into the Word of God? There's so many, so many issues we can grab onto today. So many ways that we can be influenced and we can tune our lives. But this day, this day we think that one clear note that rings out. So what's all this saying? Part of it. And the first part, I think, for each of us is to think about and consider the parts of our lives where we do hear that dissonant sound. Something's not quite right. Something's not with others or one person in particular, a dissonant 
dissonant note, dissonant chord. Something doesn't sound quite right there. Something's flat, something's sharp in our lives. Maybe it's at our work. Maybe it's in our faith. Maybe it's a moment uh, that we've given into temptation. Maybe it's our integrity that needs to be tuned up today. Well, how exciting it is in that moment before the orchestra plays to hear that one note ring out 440 hertz and each musician matching that note precisely. God has done this for each of us. God has sent his son into this world and through the life of Jesus Christ there is a note ringing out by which we can tune our lives. The only question left for us is will we do it? Will we use that beautiful, pure note? And will we get our lives in tune? Let us bow in prayer. Loving God, you haven't just given us the world in which to live. You haven't just given us the food which we can eat, the air which we can breathe. Lord, you have also given us something higher, something we can reach toward, a calling, a calling toward discipleship. And you have given us the tools we need. You have given us your son, Jesus Christ, by whose example we can tune our lives today. Lord, help us to do that today and every day. Help us to remember that this is something that we have to work on. Something we have to make a part of our lives. And that when we do, we draw closer to you and we feel you more in our lives. And we thank you for that, Lord, as well. Your presence there. Help us then to do all that we can to get our lives in tune that we may have a closer walk with you. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Thank you.